Did the Fallout TV show destroy Fallout lore? Yes, obviously it did. The Brotherhood of Steel is now just a bunch of cowardly idiots who don't even care about each other. Ghouls are these magical immortal beings that cannot be killed through conventional ways and they become feral only if they don't consume some kind of magical cure thing. Oh yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot that they absolutely just change. But here's something you didn't expect. I actually don't care. I don't care at all. The games even did not care about the Fallout lore. Every game retcons something. Every game changed something. So if the games don't care about the Fallout lore, I never expected a TV show to actually care about the Fallout lore at all to begin with. So I'm theoretically actually not that disappointed. Did the Fall TV show just retcon an entire Fallout game and in the process show us the destruction of one of the fan favorite factions with the new California Republic? Almost certainly not. But despite what many will tell you, there definitely are some interesting lore implications from the Fallout TV show and some of these may very well be mistakes by the production. Go by the way, every single video on this subject that I have seen, no one even talks about the Brotherhood of Steel and no one talks about ghouls. Like, the most jaw-dropping obvious retcons to the lore that are just completely just magical inserts no no one cares about that for some no one talks about that at all Going forward with this video, there will be spoilers for Fallout Season 1, but I'll stick only to relevant spoilers to explain the retcon theory. And frankly, if you've already been following this or reading about it on Twitter or Reddit, you probably know all of these spoilers anyway. There are two main issues with the Fallout TV show that fans are up in arms about. First, while in Vault 4, the protagonist Lucy finds a timeline of Shady Sands. The yeah. last time we see Shady Sands in the video games, it is the capital of the New California Republic. The NCR are a fan favorite faction, just generally one of the most powerful factions actions in Fallout. This new timeline from the show ends True. by listing the fall of Shady Sands in 2277, and that's followed by a drawn picture of a nuke blast. In the TV show, we could see that Shady Sands is now nuked and fully destroyed as a location. As a result of this, many fans are interpreting this to mean that Shady Sands was nuked in 2277, which... Yeah, that, that would make sense, considering in the show they said... Oh, Shady Sands was a little bit too, too good. They already were re-establishing civilization. That's why we nuked them. So, the idea that Shady Sands falls before they get nuked is completely preposterous. Because if they fell before the nuke, there's no reason to nuke them. Because the reason that Shady Sands gets nuked is because they are re-establishing civilization does not comply with existing lore, suggesting that a retcon must have occurred. Shady Sands is mentioned several times in Fallout New Vegas as an active NCR base. Fallout yes. New Vegas takes place in 2281, four years after the seeming destruction, and in turn, many fans- I don't even know this, nor I care about it, honestly. Fans are taking this to mean that the Fallout TV show is retconning the game of Fallout New Vegas. Secondly, many fans are upset- Dude, I would not be honestly surprised. Now, this is a complete just uh, rando theory, but I would not be surprised that Todd Howard in intentionally tell, uh, told them, hey, if you want retcon Fallout New Vegas, go ahead. You know why? Because Fallout New Vegas is, by pretty much honestly, everyone considered to be the best Fallout, uh, Fallout game that we have. And, well, the irony of, uh, of that, of course, is that Fallout New Vegas was not made by Bethesda. It was made by Obsidian. So, I mean, imagine your best game in the series, ignoring Skyrim and whatnot, from the Fallout franchise was not made by you, okay? I would imagine Todd Howard is pretty okay with the idea that New Vegas is just like, you know, kinda there, but who honestly cares? Set ...about seeing the destruction of the New California Republic. In the final episode of the Fallout TV show, we see a large NCR force get defeated in battle by the Brotherhood of Steel. So fans are interpreting this as the outright destruction of this faction when you take it together with the fact that Shady Sands is also gone. So when it comes to the issue of the Shady Sands... I did not even look at it that way at the end, honestly, because, um... Yeah, when you first get introduced to this place, the observatory, um, they don't look NCR at all. Honestly, I don't think these are NCR, to be completely frank. 
together with the fact that Shady Sands is also gone. So when it comes to the issue of the Shady Sands timeline, I think this is simply a poorly made timeline being- uh, But yeah, why is there an NCR flag? I have no idea. But the idea that the NCR has been fully wiped out just because of Shady Sands also doesn't seem reasonable. But then again, well, again, the biggest problem with the Fallout TV show is the fact that the uh, creators of it never even stopped for, for a split second to think, hmm, does the shit that we do make sense? And the answer is no. One reason why the NCR could absolutely be destroyed and no longer here is because the goal after, uh, after the situation in the Super Duper Mart is get, uh, gets taken in and, you know, by, by the dude who proclaims him himself to be the new president. Which kind of can't really happen if the NCR still exists, theoretically. Because, you know, the NCR would obviously not take kindly to one rando dude just proclaiming that he's the new president of the Wastes instead of the NCR, which is heavily implied there. So, I mean... I, un I honestly chug this down just to the fact that, you know, the Fallout TV show doesn't make a lot of sense in very, very almost every situation. So, who knows what the actual implications are here. Misinterpreted by some of the fan base. And the context to this scene, I think, is pretty important to understanding what's going on here. By episode 5 of the show, Maximus and Lucy end up in Vault 4, the inhabitants of which are made up of both Vault 4 residents who were experimented on by their former overseer, but also former Shady Sands residents. Following the destruction of Shady Sands, many yeah. residents actually moved into Vault 4 to take refuge, and now they operate here almost as a cult, as they remember those who fell in the destruction, and they worship this mysterious figure known as the Flame Mother, who they believe will be their salvation. Yeah, this doesn't do the flame mother doesn't make any sense. Lucy wanders around the vault and eventually finds a classroom. Within, we can see a timeline for Shady Sands titled Our History, The Rise and Fall of Shady Sands. And this highlight thin we can Okay, see let's talk a little bit about the flame mother. Okay, so here I, I don't understand who the flame mother is exactly supposed to be, right? So her name is Mel Dolver or whatever. She's the uh, she's the one who kidnaps your dad you know, in the vault, and Lucy goes out to get her dad, and, you know, it's our dad because of reasons now, you know, because you probably lack a father figure, let's be real. So, so, and from this, I kind of understood that she's immortal, and in the ghouls' flashbacks, I'm, I'm so confused, is, do we not see her in the flashbacks? Isn't she the one in the church talking about stuff? Is that not her? I am so confused about that. So, is she immortal? Is she like a cabot? I I, comp I don't want to rewatch it so I actually figure out what's going on with Moldova because she is a horrible character and she's dead. So honestly, who cares at this point, right? But the why are they actually like you know uh, praying to her? Why are why is there a cult around her? Because. As far as we understand, she's just a brando person who survived the destruction of Shady Sands, and that she's not anyone really important. So why are these people just magically worshipping her as a god? I have no idea. Uh, essentially, again, there's not a lot of things that do make sense in the in this TV in this TV show, but Moldova is a special brand of stupid in my opinion flame mother who they believe will be their salvation lucy wanders around the vault and eventually finds a classroom within we can see a timeline for shady sands titled our history the rise and fall of shady sands and this highlights six major events the founding of Shady Sands, when it was originally founded, it had nothing to do with the NCR and even predates the NCR as the next entry is the NCR forming. Then eventually, Shady Sands becomes the capital of this newly formed NCR. Over time, the New California Republic becomes the largest power in California. And then, of course, the two final points, which are the point of controversy, the fall of Shady Sands, as well as this nuke. The vast majority of fans... Also, by the way, this timeline is stupid just on a uh, basic level because... Uh, the thing is, the NCR forms, okay, and they establish a capital, and, and it l literally took them more than 70 years, well, almost 190 years effectively, to establish civilization? That is ridiculously improbable. That is absolutely ridiculously improbable. 
Now you could say, oh, do you think it's easy? Well, if you have an actual capital at this point, yeah, it should be easy. It shouldn't take you uh, eight, 90 years to establish civilization at this point. This is completely what what? Interpret this timeline as six distinct events. But the controversy arises as some fans are combining the final two events into one, implying that one. Shady Sands was nuked in 2277, that the fall of Shady Sands is referencing the nuke that fell on the town. Yep. But does that actually make sense? To me- Yes, I already explained it does make perfect sense. It doesn't make sense if that's not the case. I think this reads pretty clearly where each box on this timeline is a milestone being reached or really a new chapter for this town. And the final arrow isn't just explaining the fall of Shady Sands, but instead pointing to the next thing, the finale of Shady Sands when it is nuked. And that is to say that in 2277, Shady Sands wasn't nuked, but instead it began to fall, hence the listing here. Oftentimes when discussing the fall of Great- Doesn't make sense, because if it was starting to fall, why would they nuke it? empires it's a process rome fell on a specific day but the fall of rome is a chronicle that occurred True. over years and i believe the showrunners are intending for this to be interpreted in the exact same way in 2277 shady sands began to fall and i even think there's a bit more to back up this theory while adventuring around lucy and maximus stumble upon the shady sands sign it describes how this was the first capital of the new california republic this is a new addition to the lore suggesting that at some point the ncr moved their capital from shady sands to another city. The NCR have several states and several cities in their empire. It seems like the capital moved at some point after 2281 because it's never mentioned in Fall at New Vegas, which takes place in 2281, but we also get a brief look at the day Shady Sands is nuked. We have a young Maximus who survived the destruction in a fridge before being rescued by a Brotherhood of Steel knight. Again, Maximus' storyline is so stupid. Before we knew that this was a nuke, I, and I assume a lot of other people, just assume that, you know, Maximus was saved by the Brotherhood of Steel from, you know, raiders, a group of, you know, something and whatnot, because he wants to hurt the people who hurt him, which would imply something probably more direct than just a rando nuke dropping, okay? And if this is happening, and he survives in a fridge, why is Maximus just, like, so astonished by a brotherhood, you know, knight or paladin or whatever saving him? Bro, what do you get, get saved from? The, the fridge saved you, Maximus. You're supposed to be astonished by the fridge for saving you. <laughs> it, it makes... Dude, Maximus' story just makes no sense at any point at all. It's, it's crazy. It's just... It's just crazy. And I think this too is an incredibly large clue. Later in the show, we see Maximus as a Brotherhood Squire. Typically, this is a role reserved for only young members of the Brotherhood of Steel, which is making many think that around this time, when he's in the TV show, he's only around 20 years old. We of course know the Fallout TV show takes place in 2290. Shouldn't he be like 20 ish years old? I think that's reasonable. He's six right at the end of the Fallout timeline. And while none of this is ever confirmed, it seems to be the intention with this character. A cornerstone of Maximus's character is acting immature. I mean, his entire character is basically a young, naive squire. It makes sense for him to be on the young side of 20. So then, if we assume he is roughly eight years old here on the day Shady Sands. I don't think he's naive at all. I think he's just dumb. Sands was nuked. It would put the date of that nuke around 2284, aka three years after New Vegas takes place. And I think this is quite clearly the intention of the Fallout TV show. Shady Sands began to fall in 2277. This fall happened over a five to ten year period, and by the events of Fallout New Vegas, the fall of Shady Sands is merely in progress, with the nuke still being several years away. So all of these characters you interact with in Fallout New Vegas talking about Shady Sands are still Ah, uh, that does make sense, but I, uh, uh, again, does that matter? No, no. I like Fallout lore, but I don't like Fallout lore to the point where, you know, I care about, oh, this happens in this year and this month. I don't care about that. And again, with so many retcons happening, it's like, I just kind of care about the overall lore, and I'm just pissed about the ghouls and Brotherhood even making less sense than it usually does.
still canon. It still is a city, it's just on the decline. And honestly, this makes a lot of sense to me. In hindsight, it's obviously clear that the issue Shady Sands had in 2281 would eventually lead to the fall of Shady Sands. But while it's happening right in the middle, it might just look like a city with a couple of problems. It might not- Uh, this also kind of actually works well with Fallout New Vegas lore, because, um, Fallout in Fallout New Vegas lore, the idea- uh, one one big idea of uh of why you choose to side who you side with is the ncr is stretched extremely thin and you know they already have a lot of uh, a lot of ground they uh, they control and whatnot so why would they suddenly magically be stretched in because of it well it's not because they are stretched in is because the ncr is actually not as strong as people believe that is why they are stretched in. It's not just, you know, a question of land mass. It is literally a question of them just become, uh, being weak at that point. So, questions. I got, I got questions. This, this does kind of fit in into that, but I don't know if that's, uh, I don't know if that's, that's just me. What do you think? I think it kind of fits in, but again, I like I watched the show. Okay, the showrunners definitely did not even think uh, think that hard about anything. It not be entirely clear that these problems will eventually lead to the city's destruction, but then very likely shortly after the events of Fall at New Vegas, as Shady Sands continues to decline, the NCR decides to move to a new capital, perhaps a more secure region, and then at some point after the capital was moved, Shady Sands ends up getting nuked. And if you watch season 1 of Fallout, I think it's pretty clear that they're setting this up as a major plotline for season 2. It's almost mimicking the fall of Rome with the capital- Also, by the way, uh, that idea doesn't make sense that they nuke shady sands because blah 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 because the thing is if you have a capital your capital is typically the shining jewel of your country because it's the capital for a reason right so if the ncr had two capitals that means that it's pointless to actually just nuke one of them by you know uh vault vault 30 uh, 31 there's no point in vault tech nuking them because if they nuke that, they need to nuke the other location. Because if you nu if if the capital gets moved, that means that hey, this city is better, but this city is definitely not becoming irrelevant. It's still probably extremely p powerful, and you know all the good things. So, well, I, I, again, the the concept of you know the people who made this TV show stopping and thinking for a second about what they did is, is not real moving and it all occurring over time. We'll likely see Maximus play a much larger role in Season 2. He's from Shady Sands and now has a lot of motivation for revenge, especially because he knows exactly who caused the destruction of his home. Although in fairness, even if all of this is true, the Fall TV show almost certainly messed up. I think using the overall context of the show, it is clear that what I describe above is what they were going for. It's what they intended to be happening. But this timeline still just feels very poorly done. Like, surely they knew you're handing this to a rabid fan base of Fallout fans. I imagine they're- That is true. That is true. There are so many people that call this a 10 out of 10 for no reason, and there are also people who call this a 0 out of 10 for no reason. The highs are high. The lows are low. It's a 5 out of 10, boys. Relax. And a 5 out of 10 that's worth watching, technically, if you have nothing else going on in your life. So, again, do with that what you will. Using the 2277 date because that is the exact same year as the first battle of Hoover Dam. This is a mentioned only conflict where the NCR defends Hoover Dam from the Legion. The NCR wins. Don't remember the date, but yes, that is a legitimate thing that you get uh, get in Fallout New Vegas. That battle, but it's made abundantly clear that it was a costly victory. Yes, uh, effectively Pyrrhic victories. Dude, Fallout New Vegas is all about Pyrrhic victories, by the way. And the NCR took major losses in the process. I think it's easy. Which is also, I believe, a uh, term originating originally from Rome. Pyrrhic victory is, you you know, you win, but the losses are so high, you might as well not have one. Two, we're going to be getting a lot more NCR content, and likely exploring why they have so much less of a presence in LA at this time. I imagine they'll end up expanding the NCR lore to explain that the first battle of Hoover Dam was really a moment where things started to go downhill, eventually leading to the destruction of Shady Sands and a general decline for the NCR due to spreading their forces too thin and making themselves vulnerable to counterattacks. I think they just wanted to tease this in Season 1 while they wanted to 
to fully dive into it in Season 2. Unfortunately, since the lore around this isn't all fleshed out, because yeah, they haven't actually written Season 2 yet in all likelihood, and as a result, I believe they tried to use as few dates as possible leading to all of this confusion. We have a rough idea of when everything happens due to Maximus's age, but I think it's a simple case of them not putting in the time to pick a concrete date yet, leading to an abundance of confusion with this being an undated nuke, but it still seems pretty clear that the nuke date is very different than the fall dude if there's one date they would know about it is the nuke date okay so that also doesn't make sense date although at the same time the fall tv show at another point definitely makes it seem like shady sands was destroyed in 2277 the credits of episode 5 have this artistic panning shot of a destroyed shady sands we see library due dates that end in november i absolutely never uh watch the credit things or whatever so i i miss all of that member of 2276 just two months before 2277 aka the fall of shady sands this really really makes it seem like shady sands is completely gone by 2277 the yeah. library stopped functioning just the very next year it kind of sounds like the city's gone i think yeah. this is literally just a mistake or a credit scene dude this is not a mistake the reality is they didn't make the lore this in depth so it doesn't make sense again the biggest thing I can say about the show is that the showrunners never never stop to think about what, what they are. Does the, anything make sense? Oversight, and I definitely think it adds to the overall confusion. Or maybe there is some alternative explanation? Let me know in the comments, but frankly, I can't think of one. And even further, Shady Sands isn't even in LA. Technically, we don't know exactly where Shady Sands is, but based off the maps from earlier Fallout games, it has been widely speculated and really... Pers Dude! <laughs> You know what's funny? I, I have played Fallout New Vegas many times. Not a single time I joined the NCR. So, you know what I assume... Because I, I have played literally multiple times and I never joined the NCR. I should do a playthrough where I actually just joined the NCR once. And not slaughter them and let the fiends run over, uh, you know, the wasteland. Anyway. I... Uh, obviously you hear about Shady Sh uh, Sands. And I'm like... I, in my, I think it was the second playthrough of Fallout New Vegas where I understood, wait a minute, Shady Sands is not actually a location on the map that I can go to. Oh, this makes sense now. <laughs> because I assumed I just missed it, and at one point I actually started uh, searching for it. Presented as outside of LA, and likely several hundred miles outside of LA. When we see it in the TV show, we can see the protagonist walking from the crater to LA-based faults with relative ease. And I think this one is just a legitimate retcon to make this plotline work in the TV show. Although here too, I'm open to hearing alternative theories, and of course, this doesn't even get into some of the stuff with the Boneyard. And at the end of the day, I just gotta ask, what do you think's more likely? That the showrunners who seem to have a really good grasp on Fallout lore, and really the overall feel, the vibe, of some of these games made a couple of mistakes while trying to tease their larger Obviously. season two plans that are perhaps not fully fleshed out yet or they genuinely are doing this they genuinely are trying to retcon the fan favorite fallout game all because they want to use some of those dates for their tv yes yes you show like and if they're not happy guess what the next season is gonna retcon that and explain that that chalkboard is bull or, you know, the next game is gonna retcon that. Again, I I like the Fallout lore, but don't get me wrong, I'm not a fan fan of it. Because again, if the games don't care about its own lore, then why would the TV show care about it? Like, does that version really make more sense? What benefit would they even gain from New Vegas being retcon? Does the TV show make more money? Does it become better by New Vegas not being around? Like, when you buy a copy of New Vegas, you know who gets the money, right? It's not Obsidian. The second major criticism is that the NCR is destroyed in the Fallout TV show. This is largely based off the fact that a group of Brotherhood of Steel members take out a group of NCR members, as well as the NCR's original- I never understood the NCR flag, by the way. Well, then again, I never understood Moldova. How is she the good guy if she literally uh, goes into a vault with an unironic b b uh, pack of raiders who are, by the way, all mentally deficient, just, just so you know. Because you can see them in the vault and they're constantly acting like literally brain damaged savages. Yeah. I mean, again, Moldover by far is the worst character. 
Uh, Maximus seems like the best written character from millennia considering to the absolute sheer amount of nothing makes sense about Moldovan. Capital with shade. And again, I, I'm not sure, is she supposed to be immortal? Did, did, was she in the flashbacks from the ghoul? I'm, I don't want I don't want to rewatch it, I don't want to Google it. The character's dead and tank fully because it's a complete trash tier character, but damn, like, wow. Lady Sands is now gone. Thankfully, the community is beginning to come around on this one, and almost everyone has realized that this theory is pretty much just unfounded. During the first episode of Fallout, a group of what appear to be raiders break into Vault 32 and then attack Vault 33. We see this group is led by Moldaver, and in the finale, it is revealed that this was actually an NCR Remnants group. And in that very same finale, we see that- If they said that this is an NCR Remnants group at some point, I actually don't- one, believe it. Two, I missed it. Unironically, not even kidding. That Moldaver accomplishes her mission. She creates unlimited power for an entire city, but it very much so looks like that both she, as well as all of the other NCR members at their- Unlimited power for an entire city is cute and everything, but I honestly think it should be more unlimited power than just for a single city. Because that would be lame. Her base at the Griffith Observatory are beaten by the Brotherhood of Steel who attack. So she succeeds in her mission, but her and the NCR with her die in the process. Thankfully, we've seen several other groups of NCR members, even just in the Fallout TV show, that are very clearly not here during this attack. So no, the NCR is absolutely not wiped out. There's a group of former NCR citizens in Vault 4. These are the survivors from Shady Sands, that of course being the former NCR capital. Yeah, who praise her like a literal undying god, which again... More question marks? And even in Vault 4, we can see an NCR flag being hung, making it very much so seem like they are still NCR citizens, or at least partially consider themselves as such. During their ritual, they are chanting to bring back Shady Sands. Why is there a ritual? I, I, I don't get it. Again, everything surrounding Moldova is just pure garbage in my opinion. Blood must spill, as well as, oh flame mother, you will be our salvation. We can see quite clearly that the flame mother in question is none other than Moldaver. This too seems like a very clear setup for season 2. I have to imagine Moldaver's salvation that they're chanting about is her restoring power to an entire city, giving an entire- Yeah, no, that sounds stupid. City on- so, is Moldaver not the woman in the church that the ghoul talked about? Because the ghoul has a line in the show where he says, Ah, oh, is this Moldaver? Not how I remember her. But then again, again I, I think it's pointless to try and find any meaning in anything in the show, honestly unlimited power. She dies, but all of these other NCR members who are still very angry, willing to spill blood over what happened at Shady Sands, are still around, and I have to imagine they'll be pretty interested in this newly powered city that's kind of up for grabs. But even during that same ritual, we can see a picture of President Kimball on display. This is the president of the NCR, who very well oh, may still that. be alive, and they could simply be at the new capital of the NCR, which may not be in California anymore. There are some who are interpreting the scene between Lucy and Maximus to be spelling out the destruction of the NCR, but I just think that's a misinterpretation. Right as Lucy and Maximus find the Shady Sands sign, Lucy has a bit of a revelation that people are already saving the world, where she thought that was her job as a vault dweller, to leave the vault and save the world, but it happened already. Maximus then tells Lucy, well, if it makes you feel any better, it didn't work out. For some reason, a ton of people are ascribing this to the NCR overall, that the NCR as a whole didn't work out, but literally immediately after saying that, Maximus walks Lucy over to the crater of Shady Sands. It seems pretty clear based off the context of staring at the Shady Sand sign. No, the NCR is implied survived for 90 years, so the NCR does work out, and that's unquestionable. And, and walking over to the crater that he's saying Shady Sands didn't work out, and not necessarily the NCR overall. The Fall TV show certainly makes it clear that the NCR presence in Los Angeles is dwindling. They don't seem to have the best equipment, hence using paintball masks against people in power armor, but the NCR overall may still be fine. The last time we hear about- I mean, Paul Armor, as we now know, because of the last episode, is made out of tissue paper, so... <laughs> It's not like that's a bad attempt in my opinion, but that's okay. Anyway, I think we're done. Anyway, that was that was Juice Head, 10 out of 10. This was Quizzer said, and thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.